Hi there everyone, uh, welcome back to another Scientific Skills video. Today we're going to be taking a look at graphs. More specifically, we're going to be taking a look at how to read or extract information from a graph. So this is an important skill regardless of what level of biology you're at. Um, sometimes it's good to come over this and revise because this can come up in any sort of exam standard question but you may also need to create a graph, for example, in uh, investigation or practical work that you're doing in biology. So to start off with, uh, you may have came across these before, but there are two main types of graph that we look at in biology. First of all, there are line graphs, which are on the left here, and there are bar graphs. You can tell them apart straight away by the line graph having a line and the bar graph having these sort of bars on them. So just to go through the differences between them, you need to know what they are, but you also need to know when you use which type of graph. So for example, on the left here, we have uh, the number of days going along the bottom, and we have the height of the seedling going up the side here. So whenever we are using two sets of numbers, so when your data set contains two categories of numbers, this is where we use a line graph. So for example, it could be uh, time going across here, it could be temperature, um, but if we're measuring something such as height, that's going up the side here. So what you measure goes up the side. We'll look at that in a bit more detail in a minute. Also in biology, it's important to remember that we join the dots. So if you're creating a line graph, which we'll discuss at a different part, you always go and, uh, using a ruler, draw a line between each dot. Don't try and do a curve or a line of best fit. In terms of a bar graph though, you can see that we do not have two sets of numbers. Instead, we have categories at the bottom. So in this example here, we have types of tree. So we've got different types of tree here, different categories, different names. And we still have numbers going up the left-hand side because this is what we are measuring. So in a line graph, we have two sets of numbers. Use line graph. If you have categories, names, and a set of numbers, you would use a bar graph. So next, in terms of actually reading a graph, if you come across this in a question, uh, there are some steps that you have to go through. First of all, it sounds really daft, but you need to make sure that you read the question. The amount of times you can make a mistake by just jumping into a graph and answering what you think the question is telling you uh, can cause you to lose marks. So make sure you read exactly what's going on. So we're using the same example from before here, where there's a, clearly been a study on the number of days and this height of a seedling. So how much this seedling has grown in millimetres up the side. So pay attention to the units, pay attention to what the question is actually asking you. And we can see this uh, growth going on here as the number of days increase, that the height of the seedling increases. Now the other farm, as I've been talking about uh, looking at the bottom and what we measure goes up the side, you need to know that these are your x-axis and your y-axis. More specifically, if you remember from uh, previous problem solving videos or if you've discussed in class, along the bottom we will have the independent variable. So we'll have the variable that's been changed throughout this study or this investigation. Up the y-axis, so up the side, we always have the dependent variable. And you should remember the dependent variable is what has been measured. So we mentioned this before. But in this example here, the height of the seedling is what has been measured. So every day someone has recorded the height of a seedling, they have plotted information down, and someone here has recorded a line graph showing the changes as the number of days, the independent variable, increases. The other important thing to do is to read the scale. Uh, this is quite an easy example. We can look across here and say it goes up in 5, so 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, etc. Just make sure you're aware of what the scale is. Particularly sometimes graph paper can be quite small and it can be a bit trickier to figure out if it's going up in uh, twos, fives, tens, hundreds, 0 0.5s, uh, depending on what's going on, make sure you're comfortable with the scale. In a similar way, we'll have a different video on drawing a graph, but if you are drawing a graph, make sure you go up in constant equal amounts. You can't just jump from 5, 10, uh, 0, 5, 10, 20, 30, it's going to cause some issues. So let's look at some examples here of actually describing what's going on in the graph. So using the information from uh, the previous slide, you need to make sure that you read what the question is asking you. So you have a graph here. Sometimes people get a bit put off by seeing that there's a graph and wondering what's going to go on. So let's just take a read through it. 
says that lugworms live on the seashore in dark, moist burrows under the sand. The graph below shows the average number of lugworms at different distances from the seawater at low tide. So again, you can see it's two sets of numbers, it's a line graph. Someone has went and recorded the average number of lugworms that have been found as the distance from the seawater increases. So we go from zero meters away from low tide to 16 meters away from low tide. The question asks you, describe the relationship between the distance from the seawater at low tide and the average number of lugworms per meter squared. So first of all, this is quite a common sort of question. It's asking for the relationship between the two sets of numbers. So effectively, what happens to the average number of lugworms as the distance increases? The second thing to be careful here is that this is a two mark question. So if it's a two mark problem solving question, it's not going to be enough to say something like it increases. Okay, you can understandably look at this graph and say, okay, this line seems to be going up, right, brilliant. As the distance from the seawater increases, the average number of lugworms increases. That's not going to be enough for a two mark question. There must be something else that is going on. So let's take a look at this. At zero meters, so at the low tide mark, we can see there is uh, zero lugworms on average. As we increase our distance from the seawater at low tide, we can see the average number of lugworms starts to increase. So it goes from zero up to one, then we go to two, eventually we get to about five, 10, it starts rising quite rapidly. So we can say that as the distance from the seawater at low tide increases, the average number of lugworms per meter squared also increases. However, you can see when we get to this point here, which you should look at the bottom and say this is the 12 meter mark from low tide, we can see the numbers do not increase anymore. It remains constant, there's no change. So that must be the second mark. It increases to a point, but then the graph levels off. So your first mark should be, as the distance from the seawater increases, the average number of lugworms also increases, and you should really point out as well, up to the 12 meter mark. For your second point, you can see that after 12 meters, the number of lugworms remains constant, or that it doesn't change, or that it stays the same, levels off. Something like that. So make sure you read what the question's asking you, but also, as always, pay attention to how many marks this question is worth. Particularly with a graph, if it's two marks, there's gonna be two things happening. For one more example, I'll show you a slightly more complicated example that can trip people up sometimes. So you can see straight away, we're getting quite comfortable now with line graphs, but you can see there are two lines on this graph. There are also two axes on the side. So again, the most important thing is to first of all, read over the question and see exactly what's going on. So this graph shows changes in the enzyme and substrate concentrations in a seed over a period of time. So what we're changing is the period of time. We can see this down at the bottom on our X axis. We're fine with that. However, there's two things that are being measured. There's the enzyme concentration and there's the substrate concentration. So there's now two things to pay attention to. First of all, what is being asked of you? So the question says, how many days does it take for the substrate concentration to decrease by 50%? So we're going to be looking at the substrate concentration. We are not going to be paying attention to the enzyme concentration at all. So just ignore this site. The other thing, now that we know what we're focusing on, is first of all, we need to pay attention to only this scale here. So the substrate concentration is on this side. We have zero to six. So we are not paying attention to the two to 14 over at this end at all. We just totally ignore it. You can also see through the key or legend that the graph gives you that substrate concentration in the line graph is shown as a dotted line, whereas the enzyme is a straight line. So if you have more than one line on a graph, you could either use different styles of a line, sometimes you use different colors. If it's black and white, you would usually do a straight line or dash or dots or things like that. So again, we ignore the straight line because that is for enzymes. We only pay attention to the dotted line. So the question is asking, how many days does it take for substrate concentration to decrease by 50%? So first of all, we need to find what it was in total. So again, if we look at this side here and we only pay attention to the dotted line, we can see that at the start at zero, we have the dotted line up here. We do not pay attention to the 14, that's the common mistake some people make. We look at our substrate concentration axis 
and we see that it started off at 6. So we know that the initial concentration was 6 units. So first of all, uh, how long did it take to decrease by 50%? We know that 50% of 6, just dividing it in half, is 3. So we want to see at what point the substrate concentration got to 3 units. So again, only focusing on this side, we look at 3. We move across to see when the dotted line hit 3. And we can go down here to see it was at 4 days. So again, only paying attention to the dotted line and only paying attention to this scale. We started at 6. It decreased by 50% when it got to 3 units, which took 4 days. So that means your answer for this one was C, 4. So again, anytime you have a graph question, just take a second to read over what the question is asking you. Make sure if there are multiple axes involved that you're only paying attention to the scale and to the uh, type of line that you should be looking at. Try not to get confused by any other information. If it's a two-mark question, make sure you're stating two different things that are going on. And also try and add detail into your description questions. If you're being asked to describe a relationship between two sets of data, make sure you say exactly what's happening. Don't be vague and just say it goes up or it goes down. That's not enough. Explain exactly what you're seeing and you'll be able to deal with any graph question you come across. Thanks so much and we will get a graph, uh, how to draw a graph uh, video up sometime soon. Okay, thank you very much for listening folks.